Right. <clears throat> I'm going to talk on a little topical subject at the moment. Uh, five, the fifth generation mobile technology, which is, um, according to some outlets, is about due to hit us uh, later this year. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the hype and the reality. So, who hasn't heard of the fifth generation mobile technology? No, none of those. Who thinks it's largely hype at this point in time? Yeah, I thought there might be a few of those. You can, you can pay up for that. It's, 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 a, it's, it's a worthwhile um, a little bit of objectivity. And who thinks it's going to be a reality at the end of this year? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it and we'll see whether it's um, really true. There is a lot of hype. Um, Spark is doing its thing. Um, with its uh, little autonomous vehicle. Uh, Vodafone made its announcement last week uh, about uh, launching in December 2019, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Where do you think that tower is with 5G written all over it? Yes, it's on the Bund in, in um, Shanghai. If you're there for, an, for the night light show, you, you get 5G right in the face. So I hope you're putting some money in the, in the sergeant's box for all these fascinating bits of information. The potential for 5G is enormous. Um, I've been following it now for a decade or so, uh, and it's been around that long. Um, and um, it's uh, starting to really come to reality. And the big difference between 5G and the previous generations is that it's very focused on uh, market verticals. Uh, that is uh, energy, smart manufacturing, smart cities, uh, ag modern ag uh, advanced agriculture, um, the economy in various different ways, travel, different ways of doing things uh, through uh, industrial automa automation largely. However, there are some challenges. And one of the key challenges is that there's a particular band of frequencies at 3.5 gigahertz, which is already allocated to a whole lot of different purposes and it needs to be reallocated to allow the fifth generation mobile technology to use it. And as you can see there, I've circled up the top of the picture. Uh, October 2022 is when the licenses um, are replaced. So to doing a whole lot with five G uh, the fifth generation technology before the end of 2022 is quite challenging. So you know there is quite a lot of hype about um, today. However, there is at the bottom of the slide a little bit of an insight as to what Vodafone is doing. And that is that through its purchase of Telstra Clear some years back, it purchased um, some of the spectrum in this band and has two times 28 megahertz. Now, any good 5G engineer would say 56 megahertz is not sufficient. It should be more like 100, and that's quite true. But you can actually do some things with the uh, 56 megabits, megahertz that um, Vodafone is going to get out of its current spectrum, although using that spectrum because it was never designed for that purpose will be very challenging for them, and I wish them lots of luck. There is another set of bands which are in the millimetre wave, which have never been used for mobile before, but where there's plenty of room and there's plenty of possibility for very high bandwidth transmissions. However, again, it's very, very messy. It's very largely tied up in all sorts of different existing services and quite hard to reallocate. It's also dependent on the World Radio Conference in 2019. That's October later this year. And um, it's unlikely that this spectrum will become available until about 2023 also. It also has some other little challenges. And this is a picture which I picked up when I was in China a couple of weeks, a month or so ago. Um, this is from a, uh, a Samsung engineer has done a lot of work on propagation in these particular frequency bands. And you end up with a major problem with um, foliage attenuation, that is trees. And so I had a little conversation with the guy. The pictures on the far side there are pictures of Houston, Texas. Who knows Houston, Texas? What's very familiar about Houston, Texas? It's as flat as a pancake. And so you get very good propagation of wireless in flat areas, except for where there are trees. And you'll see from the diagrams there that if you put the antenna up at seven metres, you shoot straight into the trees and everything gets attenuated. If you go down below at two metres, 
you can actually get underneath the trees. However, what's, familiar, what's characteristic of our little quarter acre sections in New Zealand? We always have hedges and fences all below about two metres. So we actually, um, because of our terrain, very hilly, and because of the features of our sections, this technology will not work very well at all. And in fact, um, we've got an advantage that we already have ultra-fast broadband. Who has ultra-fast broadband? Excellent. Pay up. The um, 5G will come out and it will compete with um, a, a number of different technologies, particularly the copper-based technologies and some of the other wireless-based technologies, but you can't beat fibre. Fibre can expand uh, to compete with any other technology. So stick with your fibre. Someone offers you wireless. <coughs> if you have a requirement for mobility, grab it. Otherwise, stick with your fibre. Thank you very much indeed.